Um, I want to talk about rural areas. And uh, in terms of you might each speak to this uh, and how it relates to you, it, you know, it, if it's not applicable, just say so. But, um, you know, what barriers have you seen in accessing customers in rural areas or uh, uh, or expanding into rural areas? And, you know, what barriers are out there or barriers are still out there uh, or you've seen in the past? And also, I'm very curious to know if you think that's a growth area. Um, you know, some folks uh, would think that, uh, uh, you know, believe that, that uh, you know, moving modern technology or, or expanding broadband into rural areas is, is a waste of time and money. But I'd be very curious. You know, it's interesting. Um, the, the lead of our visual design community, um, considered one of the, the foremost experts in the world on designing uh, user experiences on Microsoft technologies, actually lives in uh, Lawrence, South Carolina. And having gone down there and had dinner with her a few times, it's it's about as rural as you're going to get in South Carolina. And and she's able to access our team in Washington. We have resources in Taiwan. We have resources in India, um, nearly seamlessly because she does have access to broadband technology. Uh, she is on, uh, as we've mentioned a number of times, Skype continuously, video conferencing with a, a distributed team around the world. Um, you know, I'm not sure she would have joined Interactive if it meant leaving Laura in South Carolina the ability to have the kind of quality of life, the kind of community that's important to her while still having access to a global team and working on global problems um, was highly meaningful to her and it was highly meaningful to Synteractive. And, um, you know, that's not always the case. Um, I've certainly, in, in my travels, been in any number of places where you can't get that same kind of access in rural America. And I think in order to uh, continue to drive um, those kinds of economic opportunities, um, in order to continue to drive those kinds of employment opportunities, um, we do need to ensure that rural America has full access to broadband, preferably wirelessly. Mr. Messeray. Uh, this is on now, right? Yes, um, I would agree uh, consistently with the, what, what's been put out there on this subject, which is that um, from our perspective, from our company's perspective, uh, we've hired a number of people who could only have gotten access to our company with broadband in places that are quite remote as well. Also, I've, got, I've had a couple of employees in North Carolina. Uh, I've had employees um, in Texas. I've had employees in um, Nevada. So I've had employees that are in many places that are quite a bit far away from the central core center of business where their ability to be able to work for us is completely enabled by the broadband access that they had. And what our biggest concern and what has been a problem for us is when that broadband isn't strong enough, and sometimes that is the case, we can't use some of the tools like Skype. Skype depends on some kind of uh, strength of access, if you will. And when it's a little bit below that, it starts to fail, which anyone who's been on a bad cell phone call knows what that's like. So we try and avoid those kinds of things, but that is our biggest concern in order to use some of these technologies. And as I said in our opening statements, um, um, my biggest concern is that's what we know of today. In five years' time, those technologies will continue to push forward, and we're really wanting to be able to make sure that all of our employees uh, can stay with us. I can imagine the heartbreaking conversation of having to lose an employee because they could no longer keep up with the technology. That would be a great and grave concern for us. Uh, in my circumstance, I, I don't know if there's a, a huge effect in the rural communities, except that I, I think that if there is a gap, it's just going to get worse. Uh, one of the interesting things about broadband, and if there is a renewed investment in broadband, is it, it will enable services that we can't even imagine. Uh, we, we can certainly think of common ones and, and obvious ones, like telepresence, um, remote medicine. Uh, these, these, are, these are services <clears throat> that th if you have access to broadband, you'll benefit from that. And I think rural areas will be increasingly disadvantaged and cut off from those educational and, and even, you know, telemedicine, th those types of services that will grow and flourish over time. My, my sense is that uh, broadband is expanding. First of all, it's vitally necessary in, in uh, rural America. Uh, you, you look at, uh, take, for example, the incident that happened in Amish country. And, I mean, there, there are many rural spaces where uh, – information is is vitally important bad things don't just happen in big cities although they do happen in big cities uh, and so we need that access everywhere but it's it's my belief that and, and from what I've read that broadband is continuing to expand and is investing there is there is significant investment going in every year to enhancing this uh, uh, implementation across the country and I think as not only accessibility but also 
increasing speed of access, you know, the speed of the network. And, and those two things are very important to us as a company. And uh, so uh, I, I am heartened by the fact that I see broadband continuing to grow, continuing to be uh, more accessible. We're not there yet, I don't think, but um, I, I am heartened by that. And I think that down the road, if we continue on the, on the plane that we're going, that we will arrive to where we, we need to go. And, and I would just uh, caution that it's important that all of us in small business need to know the rules uh, of the game moving forward, how things are going to work, what access, access people are going to have. When we go to put, and, and, and I'll finish, the, probably the limiting factor for us in rural areas is that police cruisers and so forth may not have laptop computers in their vehicles, may not have the connectivity there. That's something where I see necessary investment going forward. Stoffelmeyer. As a Westerner, this is something that's particularly important to me uh, for two reasons. One, I grew up in, in the West, and as you well can imagine, we have a lot of space out there, a lot of rural areas. And most of us that live in the cities in the West, we choose to live there for lifestyle. So we like to go out and camp and fish and hunt and whatever it is that we all do. And telecommuting is essential to our businesses. So often, even if we do live in the cities in the West, we need to have access to our businesses when we're having our leisure time as well. Additionally, when I grew up um, in a small town in rural Utah, we were definitely at a disadvantage with the internet. Only recently did my dad actually even have access to, he had to get a satellite internet at his home. So whenever I would go home to visit my family, I was effectively cut off from my business. Um, and that's often how it is whenever I go on vacation or spend leisure time. So I think it is absolutely essential to Westerners, perhaps even more than in other areas of the country where there's greater connectivity. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Roll.